What do you think of when you think of an amphibian? Uh, perhaps a cute little frog or salamander or a toad? Would you think of, perhaps, a crocodile-sized predator with sharp tusks that grew straight through its head? Well, that's the creature we're going to be discussing today. Meet Mastodonsaurus. At 20 feet long, this creature of the Triassic was the largest of the Temnospondyls, and, in fact, the largest known amphibian ever. But what is a Temnospondyl? Temnospondyli was a subclass of ancient amphibians ranging through time periods from the Carboniferous all the way into the Cretaceous. They were a very successful group of animals, and members have been found to have lived on every continent on the planet, including Antarctica. There was a lot of variety within the group, with some of them being mainly terrestrial, while others are theorized to never have been able to climb out of the water at all. Like other amphibians, they could lay eggs in the water, and their young would metamorphosize through multiple forms to get to adulthood. Temnospondyls were a vast influential group, and during the Triassic period, were some of the dominant semi-aquatic predators in their respective environments. Although a large portion of Temnospondyls was wiped out at the end of the Triassic, the group itself survived all through the Mesozoic era, and was finally wiped out with the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. Or was it? There are theories that modern amphibians, frogs, salamanders, and the like, evolved from the Temnospondyl group, meaning they wouldn't have all died out with the dinosaurs. The similarities between skulls of modern amphibians and their ancient relatives is the leading connection between the two groups, and it is possible that Temnospondyls may be the great, 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 etc. grandparents to that little frog your brother kept in a jar. Either way, no matter if they all died a horrible death, or if their DNA lives on in toads, the group Temnospondyli is thought to have been eradicated around the end of the Cretaceous, and it lived a long, widespread, and successful life. Like me. I... I hope. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Hailing from prehistoric England, the largest amphibian to walk the Earth may not actually have walked the Earth at all. Yes, even though the name amphibian literally means something that is both of the water and the land, this amphibian may actually have been completely aquatic. We think this because of the small limbs that weren't all that well developed, and may not have been able to drag its large body and huge head around on the ground. Speaking of the head, this animal had large eye sockets, rows of conical teeth, and two tusks on its bottom jaw. The teeth seemed suitable for catching fish, meaning it was probably mostly piscivorous, and this theory is solidified when studying coprolites from the animal, that is, fossilized waste. However, the animal may have snacked on terrestrial animals from time to time, as Mastodonsaurus tooth marks have been found on the remains of some of the smaller Temnospondyls. The two tusks on the bottom jaw would actually stick up through the openings of the skull, allowing the animal to close its mouth all the way. It is thought that these tusks may not have been strictly for hunting, and may well have also served a display purpose, as species recognition or sexual maturity. This animal was a strange cross between an alligator and a salamander, lurking in swamps and rivers, waiting for its next meal. A very interesting animal, the king of the swamps in its time. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did and want to see more like this, consider subscribing. Like the video if you think I've earned it, and comment below your favorite prehistoric amphibian. Thanks for watching. Paleontology Plus, out.